Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Turkish Stitch Crochet Shawl. A very three dimensional stitch. This looks amazing and it's using Red Heart Roll With It Melange. So what we have today is a five and a half millimeter size eye hook and there is also a stitch diagram that we're gonna be covering today. This is a really cool idea. Everything's being done at the same time so there's no border work. You just gotta stitch your way through it. So how we start is the key factor and we're gonna be going through the diagram next. On page number two we have the crochet diagram just like you see. There's also written instructions of course. So everything in the stitch key here is being demonstrated here and I'm gonna show you a larger version of this diagram that I've just printed out for myself so that I can help you uh, get through this. So we have clusters, we have the puff stitch, we have back post uh, cr uh, double crochet and uh, double crochet slip stitch chain and etc. So let's go to a bigger photograph. The key to this shell is the foundation strip. So we're gonna be making this strip all the way across first and then once we have the set amount that we want then we're then going to go back and forth. So you'll notice that these stitches are actually lying like this. So we're gonna be creating a strip. Okay this whole thing. So just look at it from this perspective. So how long do you make the strip? About 20 or so inches and we'll cover that when we get to that part of the pattern. It's about 20 inches and then what we're going to do is then from that strip then we continue then into row number one uh, two and etc. and go all the way to the top and that's how we're gonna be able to finish. So the distance of the of the foundation strip is pretty much up to you because you can see that each one of these grouping of three matches a foundation. So that means that you could do this as a blanket if you really wanted to. It'd probably be a, a yarn chewer for sure. <laughs> um, but it's actually a really neat idea. So we have roll with it melange. Let me show you this yarn in just a moment. So this is Red Heart Roll With It Melange. Look at the coloring. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like it's hand painted even though it's made by a main manufacturer and uh, it does transition on its own and it is beautiful. It's just stunning. You'll need four balls of this bad boy in order to make this particular shawl. The shawl uh, according to the information is 23 inches uh, by 63 inches. So it's actually quite a generous idea and also I bet it has a lot of flexibility because of the stitches. So enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her and let's begin the foundation strip. So grab your five and a half millimeter size eye and let's roll with it. Melange. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot and let's start. So we're going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three. This chain counts as a double crochet in the future. So just that is a double crochet. So don't even think twice about it. So in the first chain all the way back here we're going to do a puff stitch and you'll notice in the diagram that it has set or has four legs to the puff stitch. That means you're gonna do the puff uh, concept four times. So to do that you're gonna wrap the hook and go into the beginning chain all the way and you're gonna pull through. Be a little bit loose with this. So wrap the hook and going into that again. That was the second time. Wrap going in again. That was the third time and the fourth time is a charm to wrap in and in. So you will have a total of eight loops uh, consisting of that. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why do I have nine loops on here? Can you tell me why? It's because this is the starting one. Okay so those eight make up the puff stitch. So what you're going to do is that you're going to wrap the hook and pull through all eight of those loops. Don't pull through everything. So wrap and pull through everything but the final one and then wrap and then pull through the final two. And that is your puff stitch for this particular one. Now we're going to chain two, one and two and now you're gonna puff into this same chain. So wrapping and doing that four times. So wrap and through and do that four times. Don't get too tight with this stitch. Okay so you'll have your eight plus this one. So yarn over pull through the eight and then yarn over pull through the two. So what is missing? If you remember the chain three I told you counts as a double crochet. Therefore we have to double crochet into that beginning chain to, to finish off this row. You're then going to turn your work and then we're gonna start row number two of the foundation strip. So let's do that next. To do the next strip you're just gonna turn the work and you wanna slip stitch into the top of the puff and into the chain two space. That's where you're gonna start. So every time you're starting a new row with this foundation chain that's where you're gonna go. 
So you're gonna chain three. So you did that before. So that's counted as a double crochet and now you're gonna puff into this. So you're gonna wrap and going in and do that four times. You can see the yarn is starting to turn different color. Okay, so that was three and four. If you're not sure, you can just count your eight. So you're gonna yarn over, pull through the eight loops first, then yarn over, pull through the final two. Chain two to create the space and puff again. Just move things around if you have to, like just shift it out of the way. Because you're just going in a chain, it's just loosely there. It's not locked by sitting in a stitch. So yarn over, pull through and then yarn over, pull through two. And to finish that row, you're just gonna double crochet into that same chain two space. Let's cover this again. So this is the last time I'll show you. So you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the puff and into the chain two space and then begin again. So chain three, so one, two, three and then puff into that same chain two space. Pull through all eight first, then the two. This yarn is actually really easy to do the puff stitch with. I'm actually shocked. <laughs> okay, so, so now chain two to create the space and then puff. There's some yarns that these kind of puff stitches don't work really well. This one does. Thank goodness. And then yarn over, pull through the eight and then the final two and then what are you missing? That final double crochet. So you wanna just create this foundation chain so that it's about 20 inches that it states and that's kind of fun and you can go as long as you wanna go. So if you want a longer uh, width, just remember that you will change the yarn quantities by doing so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match exactly what is shown in the pattern. So the pattern shows that there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine. So I'm going to do nine of these for a foundation and then I'm gonna start with row number one. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. Um, I don't know how many of these that you need to do for the 20 inches. Just get a tape measure and measure at 20 inches and then we'll continue into the next um, section as we then begin row number one. So here's your foundation strip and this just matches the swatch that you see in the diagram. But you wanna take a measurement and then measure it to be 20 inches. So it didn't take long to get here and you're noticing that the color is changing too which is awesome. So let's uh, begin and once you're ready with your foundation strip you're gonna turn it sideways and then we're gonna work along the side edge here and then we're going to begin row number one. So let's do that. So now that we completed the foundation, what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain up two and in the side of this post, you're going to do a puff, chain two and a puff. Noticing that you always do it on the ends. So in the middle of these, so it's either a chain three which counts as a double crochet or it's a double crochet post, there's gonna be three double crochets in each of those. That's why you could just, just change the shape as far as making it bigger. So then you're just gonna do that across and then you're gonna puff into the end noticing that there's not uh, a double crochet after this puff. That's why there's only chain two here. So then you're just gonna chain two. So these chain twos are more of a builder than anything. They're not really a stitch at all. And then you'll puff and then this time in the middle one you're, you're setting the groundwork for what you want. So in the middle one you're gonna put three um, double crochets in each one of these groups and then the end you'll puff and then finally in number three we're gonna get really into the fun work and then we'll do your puff for the ends and then we're gonna do a back post um, double crochet around the first one of this group. Noticing that we're going to be putting chain threes in between. That's what makes that wanna flip to make it three dimensional. Then finally we're gonna get to row number four and then row number four basically is the repeat for the whole thing. So it's just showing you number five just to show you how it goes and once you turn it. So this is a reversible uh, shawl so there's no good side or, or, or there's no right side or wrong side to this thing. It, you can turn over. It's actually gonna be really awesome. Let's begin row number one. So right where you're sitting you're just going to chain two and then starting in the side of the post that you have, you're going to do your puff. You're gonna basically do what you did with the foundation. So you'll do your puff. It's still in the groups of fours. Okay, then you'll pull through all of the eight and then the two. And then chain two and then puff again into that same one. So this is gonna be how you're going to do the, the edges. Okay, so now we're gonna get the fun stuff. So in each of the, either the chain three or the double crochet side of the post, you're gonna put three 
double crochets in each. So one, two, and three. And then just jump to the next one, the side post only, and just do one, two, and three. And you're gonna do that all the way across. I'll see you on the other side where we'll finish off with a puff stitch on the very last one. Okay, so you're gonna come all the way across and then in the very last one here, you're going to do that edging like I talked about. So it's the puff, and then chain two, and then a puff again. So the only difference as I mentioned before is that there is no double crochet after this last puff goes in. So once you have that done, you're officially done. So then you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number two. We're gonna uh, concentrate on the middle ones of the grouping of the double crochets. So in row number two, what we're going to do is right where we are, we're going to just chain two and then you're gonna go into this chain two space between the, the puffs and then you're gonna just do another one of those. So do a puff, a chain two and a puff. Once that last puff is in, you're going to concentrate on the middle one of the groupings of three and you're going to put three double crochets in the middle one only. Okay, and then jump to the middle one of the next grouping of three and do that all the way across and I'll see you at the other side. Once you get to the other side, it's just the middle one, you're just gonna jump and then just put in that puff right at the end. Usually the puff stitches that I know um, consist of only three um, times to go in. This is four so I'm kind of confusing myself a little bit just from experience. So then you get that. So then you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number three and this is when the fun stuff really starts. So let's begin row number three. So you're gonna chain two, one and two and then you're gonna puff into the chain two space. I like the simplicity of this pattern. So chain two, and then do this puff. Now after this puff, you're going to chain three, and you, in the first one of the groupings of the three, you're going to apply three back post double crochets. So to do that, if you're not familiar, so just wrap the hook, come in from the back of it, put the hook to the front and then push the hook on the other side of that post to the back and pull through. And it's just a double crochet around the post. So you're gonna do that three times total. So there'll be a lot hanging off on the one and that's what makes it wanna do that twist. After you have that done, I need you to chain three and then just jump to the next group. So back post around the next one, one, two, and three. And don't forget the chain three in between. So one, two, three, and then the beginning one again of the next group. And I want you to do that all the way across for me. And I'll be back in just a moment. Just don't forget the chain threes in between each one of these. So now that I just did the last one here, make sure you chain three before jumping to the edge puffing. And this will conclude off, oops, this is a puff. Uh, this will conclude off then row number three. So after you finish the last grouping here, you can make sure you chain three before starting the edge puffing. So now that we're done, you can see it's awesome. And when you turn it around for and starting row number four, which is the repeat, you can see that the three dimensional is already in. So let's begin row number four, which is what you'll be doing for the remaining of this project until you get to the last two rows. So let's uh, begin row number four, which is your repeat. So row number four, you're gonna chain up two 
and then you're gonna do your puff edging as you know it. And then chain two and then in. So after you have that puffing in, you chain three. So that's the secret and now you're gonna go to the first one of the grouping of three and you're gonna do a back post double crochet three times. So one, two, and three. And don't forget to chain three. So one, two, three and then come to the next one. So it's the first one of the grouping of three is gonna have three back post double crochets. So I want you to do this all the way across. Don't forget your chain three spaces in between those and you can see it's really turning out lovely. Let's uh, continue and I'll see you at the end of the row number four. So just coming up to the last one. So you've just done the first uh, back post double crochet the three of them on the first post. You've chained your three and now you're gonna do the edging as you know it. So it's gonna be a puff. Chain two separates the middle space. And then you turn your work. So when you turn your work you can really start seeing it now. So you just need to do a few more rows and then you'll really start seeing it turning out. Um, it's really kind of neat as it's going to start progressing. So you're just gonna repeat rows number four. So you'll chain two, you'll put your puff, chain two and puff in, the, in there. You'll chain three and then three back post double crochets in the first one, chain three and three back post double crochet. So, so at this point you're gonna wanna go 64 inches from here all the way until you're ready for the next, uh, the last two rows. So you're gonna go 64 inches and you'll see it turning out pretty awesome. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. I'm just doing a small swatch but get your 64 inches done or how, however long you wanna make it and I'll be right back in just a moment. So now that we have our pattern uh, completed, so you're gonna do your 64 inches and then I'm going to pick you up here. This is the second last row. We're gonna chain two and we're gonna put a puff in to match. You'll notice that there's a puff on this side as well. And in the very first stitch, so just look at it from this perspective. So in the very first one, you're just gonna put three back post double crochets into the stitch here. And you're noticing that you're not doing any kind of chaining after it. So you just three, 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 three and that'll bring it back in balance. So let's begin the next row. So this is the next row. This is the second last row of the whole thing. So you're gonna chain two, doesn't count as anything and you're gonna do your puff edging as you know it. Okay and then chain two. So I haven't done enough of this sample to really get those yarn colors to be exposed in the melange um, but there's some really great colors just waiting to come out from this ball. So after you have that done you're not gonna chain three. You're gonna come to the first one of the group and you're going to put three double crochet or three back post double crochets around those. So you're pulling things back together with this particular row. So once that three is in, go and go to the next one over here. It's the next grouping and put three back post double crochets in that one as well. So I want you to do that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. So I've just done my three back posts around the first one and then just jump right into the edge and do your puffing as you know it. So now we're gonna turn our work and begin the last row and let's just study that for a second. So let's do the last row as if you're finishing. Well in your case you probably are. Myself is just a swatch. So I'm going to chain up three. So one, two, three. This is the last row and in the very first one of the puff here you're going to apply a puff. So not to a space but into the top of the first puff. Once you have that done, you're going to slip stitch to the top of the second puff that you have. 
now the fun stuff begins. Chain three, so one, two, three. And what you're going to do then is in the same, so in the same space that I just did there, that's where you're gonna put the next puff. It's where that slip stitching went in. Okay, and now you're just going to come in and you're going to go to the last one of the grouping of three. So slip stitch and then chain three and begin a puff right into that same spot that you did the slip stitching in. The banging is the dog upstairs in the bedroom. It's raining out so I can't put her outside. So once you have that puffed in, just go to the last one, slip stitch, and then chain three. So one, two, three. Uh, she's grown so much she doesn't really fit under the bed anymore. So I give her another week and she can't get under there. So she's a great Pyrenees. So then you're gonna puff. And then slip stitch to the last one of the grouping of three. And you're gonna do that all the way across and that will conclude this off. So I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, so we're just coming in. I'm in the last one of the grouping of three before the edge. So you're just gonna chain three and you're gonna lay a puff there. I can drop one of them. Okay, so now when you go to slip stitch, you're going to slip stitch and I just wanna look at the instructions for a second. You wanna slip stitch in the chain two space and then chain up three, so one, two, three and right in that same slip stitching spot. Okay, so that it locks. You're gonna do another puff. Okay, and then you're going to slip stitch it then into the top of the last puff here and that'll conclude off your project like that. Pretty neat. So what I want to do is just fasten off. So let me show you how to do that. So just trim your yarn. You'll wanna do this anyway with any time you had a switch. You had four balls if you recalled. And you're just gonna take your tapestry needle and you'll wanna do this with all your loose ends. So you're just gonna come into the work and just dive it in. Just stay within the same color line so don't go too far. So one and then a slightly different path for two and then a slightly different path for three. And that should never fall out on you. And then you're good to go. So there's no fringe or anything added to this particular one and just give it a bit of a stretch. And you can see that you have your corrugated kind of look, the three dimensional and you can see it looks the same on both sides and it's actually really, really neat. So this is the Turkish Stitch Crochet Shawl. Hopefully you've enjoyed and have yourself a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.